All right, folks, confession time. I've been playing saxophone professionally now for over 15 years. And in that time, I have never, not once, seriously worked on my reeds. Now this is of course, despite the fact that saxophone reeds are seriously expensive. Particularly when you consider that in a box of 10 reeds, it's not uncommon to have less than half of those reeds in what we would call a good playable condition. So, how did I get around this little problem? Well, I would pick the reeds that were playing well out of the box and play them until they were completely dead. And sometimes even a little past that. But that is not a strategy I would recommend to anyone. There is a better way and it comes in the form of this guy the Reed Geek G4. Now, if this already sounds like a product infomercial, I assure you it's not. Reed Geek hasn't sponsored this video, but I know that they do great work. And I know this tool has already transformed the way I think about saxophone reeds in terms of unlocking those reeds in the box I simply wasn't using before, and even extending the life of the reeds that I am. So here's two simple techniques I've been using with the Reed Geek that you can use to completely transform form your saxophone reeds. So here is the reed we're going to be working on today. It's a Van Doren V16 strength two and a half. So it's not an overly strong reed, but I can tell you just from playing this for the first time about five minutes ago, it is a very, very stuffy reed. It's not performing how you would hope it to perform out of the box. And what we're going to do in stage one of this little reed geek tutorial, here it is, is we're going to level the table of this reed. So the table is the flat side of the reed and it's very important that this table is absolutely level so that when we grab our mouthpiece, we can put it on top of there and it gets an absolutely firm flush seal. It's very hard to tell just by this alone, just by looking at it there, if this is sealing properly. But what we're gonna do as a precautionary method, even though this is a brand new reed, is we're gonna level this table now with the reed geek. So here's the reed geek. This is the part of the reed geek we're gonna use, this little curved bit on the end here. And we're gonna get the reed, support it just like this. Notice how I'm using my forefinger there my index finger, and I've got my middle finger and my thumb just supporting it on each side. And then we're simply gonna drag this up and down on the reed. We're just doing half at a time. So notice we're doing the, uh, the thicker end first, just where the printing is. And I'm already seeing some wood shavings come off. So now we're gonna do the thinner end. So just gonna flip it around, same thing, just support it with our uh, index finger there and we're going to drag this up and down the reed. Now notice I'm just avoiding getting the very, very tip of the reed. So that final couple of millimeters we're not gonna to bother touching. Okay, we're just gonna try and smooth out the rest of the reed though. All right, that's pretty good now. So hopefully that will give us a better seal on the mouthpiece. Now the thing is, this is a brand new reed, so we wouldn't really typically expect to get a lot of wood shavings off this because you would hope that it's already quite level. However, as you play a reed multiple times, it will expand and contract every time because the water, the, the moisture in your mouth is gonna soak into this reed and into the fibers, it's gonna expand. And then as it dries out, when you're done playing, it's gonna contract again. So this reed will warm over time just like any other saxophone reed and so just leveling the table can really improve the playability of your reeds um, and it basically guarantees that you can get a nice firm seal on your mouthpiece now there is another thing that we're going to do to this reed before uh, we play test it so stick around and find out Here's a couple of quick facts about reeds. Did you know that every reed, whether a strength one or a strength four, is cut to exactly the same specifications? Even the thickness of the reeds are identical. The strength as we know it actually has to do with the amount of flex in the reed. Reed companies individually test each reed and then assign it a number. The more flexibility it has, the lower the strength and vice versa. Because cane reeds are grown naturally, 
Unfortunately, it's perfectly normal to expect natural variances in each reed. So although you may play on a size 3 reed, in a box of 10 reeds, you can generally expect to receive 3 or 4 reeds which fall exactly into the size 3 window. These are generally considered the good, playable reeds we all love, but then the other reeds in the box will likely fall either side of that window, some closer to a 3.5 and some closer to a 2.5. Generally the reeds we struggle with the most are the reeds that fall on the harder side of our ideal window. These tend to be the stuffier, more resistant reeds that are difficult to play. To another player, they may be just right, but to you, they simply won't work. The good news is that these reeds also offer the greatest potential for improvement. P.S. If you want a great behind the scenes look at how saxophone reeds are made, I'll leave a link to the fantastic video Jay Metcalf made over at Better Sax where he took a tour of the Rigotti factory in southern France. But for now, let's look at another technique you can use to massively improve the playability of your sax reeds. So on screen now, you're going to see what this reed actually looks like with a light shining underneath it. And you can see here, this is a pretty typical profile um, for a saxophone reed. It's, it's not horrible looking, it's looking fairly even, but this dark spot in the middle, this is called the heart of the reed. And we want to arrange it into a triangular point like this. So you can see that this reed doesn't exactly fit the profile perfectly of what we would hope from a saxophone reed. So it's back to our reed geek again. And if you notice, on the end of it we have a little blade on there and the reed geek folks like to talk about this like a pencil eraser so if we just rub it up and down our reed we can essentially erase out the dark thicker spots of the reed so if we get our reed again and what I'm gonna do is just support it gently again and try to just go up and down the sides of this reed really trying to get the heart into a nice pointy triangle. Starting on the right hand side first, and you can see we're getting quite a few wood shavings off this thing. Okay, now we'll try the left hand side. So if we hold it up to the light, looks okay. We've still got to get a bit more of a point in the heart there. Hopefully you can see now, we've got a bit more of a point happening. Um, I can spend a little bit more time just trying to get it a little bit cleaner, but you know, I don't think perfection is ever the game that we're playing when working on our reeds like this. It's just to get it better than what it was, okay? Uh, maybe that's just because I'm still a bit of a novice when it comes to working on my reeds, but that to me looks a whole heck of a lot better than it was before. So we're just gonna finish this off just with one more little trick. Just gonna grab our reed geek one more time and that curved bit that we had before that we worked on our table with, I'm just gonna gently run this up and down the top side of the reed just to make sure that that's kind of nice and smooth and even as well. There we go, that's looking good. Let's see how this is gonna play. All right, time for the moment you've all been waiting for. Has the Reed Geek truly transformed this saxophone reed? Here's what it sounded like before I worked on it. <laughs> And here's what it sounds like now. Well, I gotta say, spending a couple of minutes working on this sax read has left me feeling conflicted. On the one hand, the improvement has been massive. Not only do I feel like it's completely opened up the tone, but the feeling and the response of the read is so much better when I'm playing on it. 
On the other hand, of course, I feel like an idiot because I spent years tossing out reads that I thought would never come good, wasting thousands of dollars along the way. Every saxophone player I believe now should learn these basic techniques for working on their sax reads in order to give them that added control over their tone. Of course, don't feel too bad if you're not doing this already because take it from me, it's never too late to start. Now, if you want to pick up a Reed Geek G4 for yourself, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And finally, if you've been learning saxophone for a while, you've already mastered the basics, but lately you've been struggling to make progress and your practice is a mess. Check out my masterclass on supercharging your practice. In this 30 minute workshop, I'll give you some great exercises to rapidly enhance your playing. Give you my exact practice framework, which you can download as a PDF, as well as some backing tracks to help you along the way. If you lead a busy life, you'll want to watch this workshop because I'll show you how you can still get great results in as little as one hour per week. I've got a link to this workshop in the description of this video. To all our subscribers, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.